Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So this is the weekly chart of silver on Netdania. And I've drawn a number of things in here. Of course, there is the long-term trend line. And you can see that the low that we got in 2015, right before the beginning of the next year, uh, met that trend line, fairly well-established trend line. Now we're, we seem to be getting a bounce that's above the trend line. I was expecting that this trend line would be tested and possibly broken through. Now it's starting to look like it's maybe going the other direction. There's a couple of things here. First of all, the volume. So you can see here we're looking at our weekly number. It's at 5 million. It's just the very beginning of the week. But that 5 million number that we're at, you can see a little dot down there, a little red dot. That was pretty much uh, volume for an entire week. And you can see this spike here, that volume spike, that is the election of Donald Trump. And uh, they did a, there was a rally in both gold and silver and a quick reversal. So you can see that marks the peak in volume. And it also seems to mark a potential bottom uh, if we follow the yearly pattern, especially where we tend to rise through January, January through the spring. Now, you can also see this confirmed with this MACD that's getting very, very close to a crossover. You can see that it's just touching the line there. It's below the zero line, and it's just touching. So a decent move up, probably to 18, would give us a cross of the blue line by the red line and a probably a cross into positive territory on the MACD number. Now this goes back a very long way. You can see uh, the bottom was put in on the MACD all the way back in 2013. We do have kind of a precedent for this thing failing and then rallying it back in here. You can see that's what happened. And it was actually the, the breakout back into positive territory and staying above the zero line was a precursor to this massive rally that we had in 2010 that led up to that $50 price. So adding all those together right now, the technicals look fairly bullish. Now the fundamentals, it's hard to even make sense of the fundamentals. That's what we're going to be looking at with the bond market. But uh, let's jump over to Bitcoin. Now you can see that Bitcoin is just kind of drying out volume wise. Uh, I pointed out before that we're okay coin is now being quoted. I think that the Huobi is just completely offline and you can see that flat line there. Uh, but we see the same thing in almost all the markets. Bitfinex, you can see that it's US market. Bitstamp, you can see all of these markets show a complete drying up of volume and the price is really stabilizing. Um, what does this all mean? Well we know that margin was taken away in China and apparently margin was uh, what accounted for the massive volume that we've had. And now that it's taken away uh, it, it, pe people can't bet on their gains and try to double up but at the same time we're not selling off. So that's going to indicate to me that we're probably going to make the next move higher just because the fact that taking away borrowed money from the market really didn't damage the price that much. Uh, it did from you know this 8,000 to 6,500, but uh, where we are right now is you can see time-wise is at a price that's higher than we were you know on Christmas Day uh, so that's not a very long time horizon you can see when we go out to the daily that we still have what could arguably be a rising trend in the price and uh, it doesn't seem to be correcting that much the MACD has crossed over to the upside so bullish formation in Bitcoin, bullish formation in silver. And the big question is going to be, are we going to uh, be having a reflation? 
Now, here's the debt to the penny. Uh, we're still hovering below 20 trillion on the national debt. You can see a year ago to the day, roughly 19 trillion, and now we're 19. So about a trillion dollars uh, still is the pace. Now, I mentioned before that we have that date coming up where there's a debt showdown of how they're going to deal with the debt, whether they're going to just suspend the limit permanently, whether they're going to put a the ceilings back into place but all this hinges on what happens in the bond market now this article from Zero Hedge is about David Rosenberg's warning that the bull market is not over and I'm going to read some of this and then comment on this because uh, it's it's kind of interesting the perspective here so it starts out I don't buy it at all exclaims Gluskin's chef Gluskin Chef's David Rosenberg in a recent interview with Macro Voices. Quote, look, all I say is that in 2009, 2010, when the Fed embarked on QE, along with zero interest rates, every Tom, Dick, and Harry portfolio manager and bond market pundit out there was screaming about the end of the secular bull market in bonds, and they were all wrong. Bill Gross recently said, if we cross about 2.6% based on the thickness of this pencil that marks the end of the bull market, I don't look at it that way. I look at it when you take a look at the 10-year note, or you look at the long bond for that matter in each cycle, the highs in yield are getting lower and the lows are getting lower. The highs are getting lower and the lows are getting lower. And so we have to wait and see how far this thing goes. I would think that to really call for a secular bull market to be over, I think we have to cross well over 4%. Now here's the chart that he's talking about here. You, this is the 30 year, but the 10 years, very similar pattern. And you can see this trend that he's talking about. Uh, this trend is, is very, very strong. You can see that the financial crisis was definitely uh, the biggest blip on the radar screen for this thing but really the end result was just a continuation of the pattern that we've had uh, these declining yields and rising bond prices so this is the area that we're in right now it's labeled the Trump reflation and uh, his his call is basically that it's going to reverse here soon and continue its course so I want to comment on this this one reference he makes here, uh, we'll keep going. This is about the eighth time we had a backup of this magnitude in the past decade. They come and they go. I just think that there's still too many powerful sec, too many powerful sector of forces at play: global competitiveness pressures, aging demographics, and the industrialized world. Now, this is an assumption here that this is a free market. You see, he's citing fundamental factors that drive the free market, and we're going to see his argument kind of changes a little bit. Uh, right here in the next sentence where he says, and we just have too much debt globally to withstand rises in the market rates much more than we already have done. Now, if you think about that statement, what does the market care? What do uh, people who buy bonds, why would they care about the ability of governments and other entities to withstand rises in rates. It doesn't make any sense. That's not why a person buys a bond in a free market. You buy a bond because you think that the yield is appealing based on other factors or comparative rates in other markets or returns that you can find somewhere else. You're not thinking about, well, um, I'm not, I'm not going to buy this bond or I'm going to buy this bond because um, the US government can't pay their debts. It just doesn't make any sense. And what this is, is a tacit admission that the bond market is manipulated. It's not a matter of people buying something that they think has value. It's a matter of the central banks intervening in the market and buying up the bonds to suppress interest rates to keep the US government from collapsing because I just showed you the one trillion dollars that's added yearly and you know we'll probably pick up the pace we we've been around 
uh, 1.2 trillion for a very long time and now it's backed off to 1 trillion but we're probably going to bounce right back up because uh, we're in that point in the the year that things start picking up again so uh, it if we're continually adding one trillion dollars a year to the national debt which is around 20 trillion dollars a five percent interest rate is going to mean uh, one trillion dollars a year in interest payments and a five percent interest rate isn't that high so I think it's very interesting here that we have a tacit admission from one of these bond bulls that the reason why the bond market is going up is because the government can't afford for the bond market to go down that's the bottom line now the question is are we going to have a reflation will Trump use inflation to kickstart this system is he going to uh, create a whole bunch of infrastructure jobs we've already had the Congress uh, the Democrats in Congress talking about how they would support uh, an infrastructure plan of uh, whatever it was trillions of dollars and uh, if Donald Trump did that so uh, we already have had hints about uh, them reflating the system uh, basically just printing money so the big question is going to be if they go on another cycle of money printing how are they going to be able to suppress the prices of things like silver, gold, and Bitcoin that should, in all normal uh, situations, should rise very rapidly in price due to that inflation. Now, they've done an amazing job so far in managing the rise. Uh, you can see there, as I pointed out before, a 5 million volume versus 250 million volume spike when uh, we had the election so you're talking about them increasing the volume by a factor of uh, 50 a 50 fold factor they've had to uh, increase the volume of silver paper contracts to keep that price suppression in place and it appears that that volume may actually be kind of a bottom marking spike we're gonna have to wait and see if this MACD crosses over to the upside uh, both the lines and uh, through the zero point and uh, it's it'll end up being something on the monthly you can see that the further you go out this could actually be that type of volume uh, bottom uh, something like we've never seen before you can see in the past those volume spikes are completely irrelevant they're not even registering on the chart because they've had to increase the volume of paper trading so high to keep the market down so it's starting to look like they're probably going to try to follow a path of another reflation probably another 10 trillion but if it's in an eight-year period the pattern so far has been doubling in eight years so we're talking about uh, 40 trillion dollar national debt at the end of eight years assuming let's say that Trump gets two terms we're looking at 40 trillion dollars then at a 5% interest rate you're talking about two trillion dollar debt payment uh, we know there's hardly any money left anymore to run the government at all it's all now virtually transfer payments from one person to another it's people living off the government whether that's federal employees I showed you on the national debt clock the other day so you can imagine how bad it's going to be if we try to go another eight years and double the debt again I'm not gonna say that it's impossible because they've amazed me with their ability to kick the can down the road so far but we definitely have silver perking up here um, possibly sensing that Bitcoin although it has uh, kind of gone flat line due to the lack of margin buying it definitely has not dropped in price so we may get another leg up there and uh, the market seem to be sniffing out some massive reflation to come and we'll talk to you next time